do you believe, do you see evidence that the commercial mortgage-backed securities market is opening up? Yeah, I, I agree that it's opening up, and I agree as well that it's based off of a new valuation and a new pricing metrics. I think it's going to take at least another 12 to 18 months to really sort through all of that and see how all of the existing loans are able to be refinanced. So, Martin, it's really interesting, and thanks so much for joining us. Your business is really interesting because when you uh, founded your business with your partner, I believe Jeff Schwartz, uh, more than a decade ago, uh, it was 5% equity, or excuse me, 95% equity, 5% debt. But now it's 50-50. The last six months, you've just seen a boom for that private lending, similar to what KKR, Blackstone does. Uh, talk to us about that side of your business, and, and does that reflect the fact that the CMBS market is not quite what it used to be? Yeah, I mean, I think the crux of our business today is really related to the lack of liquidity within the commercial banking world. Um, you know, that's really the space that we play in, which is in the construction financing of residential multifamily housing. And what we're seeing today is that the, the volume of transactions that we are seeing is probably 10x of what it was about a year ago. We've been able to deploy almost a billion dollars in the last six months through private lending, which is a very unique opportunity set. And I think it's going to remain that way while, while the banks continue to tighten up their underwriting expert, ex, um, expectations. Um, and based off of that, I think there's going to be a big opportunity for private credit within the market for the next 12 to 24 months. That's very, very interesting for sure. So turning to the real estate side, the equity side, uh, a lot of your business, a lot of the properties you own here in New York City, I know that you think it's uh, pretty strong. But on the other hand, the development side is tough just because of the rising costs. How important, especially for the multifamily, how important is uh, Albany passing some sort of tax abatement law back into into place? I mean, I think it's imperative. I think there's, there's basically no way to underwrite an equity transaction of building multifamily housing without a tax abatement program. And I think, um, apropos to our timing, um, there's something coming down right now that would really help a lot to sort of have our people start underwriting correctly, having the real estate taxes be a percentage of, of gross income that's digestible um, to develop real estate. The cost of, of developing has gone up. Mm -hmm. um, and in order, as well as the financing of transactions. So without an abatement, to be able to underwrite a rental property is almost impossible. Yeah, costs have been going up. That's just kind of the bottom line here. So as a result, a lot of people have been anticipating a surge in distressed deals hitting the market, uh, especially across offices and perhaps even residential apartments. Do you see evidence of that starting to happen? And if so, are we you know, in the first inning of that, maybe the third inning? I definitely am starting to see that happening. Um, we're starting to get NPLs for the first time that we have seen in the last 12 months. The wave that we were expecting in terms of the volume and the dollar amount, we're not seeing quite yet. But the opportunity set's coming, and I think we are in inning one or two of that sort of working its way through. And a lot of it relates to interest rates. At the end of the day, I'm sure we talk about it all the time, everything relates to interest rates. If interest rates stay where they are over the next two years, we're going to be in a very challenged position for a lot of loans that are coming off. If they, if they are able to start going down and we're in a position where rates start to drop a little bit, that will save a tremendous amount of the real estate. Um, I want to differentiate, though, like I do think that the residential housing market in general is a more stable, stronger asset class, as opposed to some of the office conversations and retail that we've spoken about before. Yeah, office and retail is certainly uh, problematic. But another portion of your business, and I think that this is so important and interesting here in New York City, is the affordable housing, transitional housing. I know that that's becoming a larger part of your business and that it's a real collaboration between uh, private and public. Talk to us about that process. Yeah, I mean, there there's an endless amount of demand for affordable housing. And when I say affordable, I mean deep affordable housing, um, not necessarily just workforce housing. Um, and we go back to the budget of New York, right? We need the budget for New York to be able to facilitate the development of larger multifamily housing that really helps support the affordable space. Um, transitional falls within the same range, right? There's a need for transitional housing in New York. There's a need for transitional housing across the United States of America. Um, and, I, and I think it's really important to be able to work together with government agencies and the private sector to solve that problem. And very quickly, your business is not just here in New York. It's also in Texas, Florida, Carolinas. Was that just a result of the pandemic or you're already in those areas and you explain, ex, plan to expand? Because I've heard that it's sort of overbuilt in some of those spaces. Yeah, you know, we, we have really been focusing on those markets for the last three, four years and studying them. And, and I think certain markets do have oversupply in them and certain don't. And we're very micro-focused 
on what markets make sense for us. But it has been a plan that's been in the works for the last five to six years, and it's starting to come into fruition for us.